We just heard the announcement uh, today by our premier and an update and in fact uh, this news that they're uh, shutting down schools. Um, uh, I did ask a question about vaccinating all teachers and using that time to do that. Um, what can you say to respond or what do you have to say uh, to this announcement and um, basically what they answered with in terms of uh, waiting for supply in order to get to everybody? Well, first of all, I think it's absolutely pathetic that we arrived at a place in Ontario today. I say this as both a politician and as the father of two young daughters who attend elementary school here in York Region, that we've ended up in a spot where today the Premier and his government are acting like this was a surprise because of variants of concern when their own modeling showed weeks ago that this is where we would end up once he, Doug Ford, decided to start loosening restrictions. Uh, for more than a week now, for at least a couple of weeks, I and others have called on Doug Ford to prioritize uh, vaccine rollout for frontline education workers so that our kids could continue to go to school rather than do virtual learning. Like paid sick days, like so much else in this pandemic, he has stubbornly refused to do the right thing. And just yesterday, his own Minister of Education put out a letter to parents across this province, me included, to say that schools were safe and that they would be going back in person on Monday of next week, 24 hours later, when the case count didn't change much in those 24 hours, we were over 4,000 again today, for example, they've reversed course. This is now negligence. This is no longer incompetence. I think the infighting between Doug Ford and his education minister is absolutely abysmal. And I, I am just beside myself with the lack of leadership we have from our premier in this moment. So now that, I mean, including your kids, they're going to be at home in school. They are not going back. So now now that we have this, we're, we're here. Um, what, uh, what do you advise should be the next steps? They said that, you know, they are going to start rolling out vaccinating our, our teachers, our education workers as well um, to those hotspot areas, so Toronto and Peel, um, and that they'll wait for other regions once supply comes in. Um, what do you say to that? Do we have enough supply? Should we be using this break? If there is no end in sight of this online learning, should we be change, shifting our gears in terms of how we do the vaccine rollout? Yes, we absolutely should. This is the week where Doug Ford should have known weeks ago uh, that he could have used this April break, used our publicly funded schools as hubs, and actually conducted a vaccine blitz. It's what I called for more than a couple of weeks ago. The fact that he continues to point the finger and suggest that there's a supply issue with vaccines is simply a lie. The facts do not back up Doug Ford. And for some reason, uh, for reasons beyond my comprehension, especially on a day when he announced that schools across the province would close in direct uh, contra contradiction of what he, his, his uh, education minister said yesterday. Today should have been the day that he announced the vaccine blitz that I called for a couple of weeks ago. And instead, instead, typical of Doug Ford, he pointed the finger at somebody else. This is inexcusable. It is no longer leadership. Frankly, it's no longer even incompetence. It is negligence. And I guess one of the things that you had mentioned that you wanted to know, uh, I guess that was not discussed today, was the hotspot postal code areas, those zones. Um, are you going, wh what were you looking for there? What's the confusion in your mind? Well, we saw a CBC story earlier this morning that suggested that there were a number of postal codes in the GTHA that had been included as hotspots that actually don't seem to truly be hotspots and those happen to be represented by conservative MPPs. And there were seven other postal codes in different parts of the province that should be considered hotspots that weren't included. And those are held by opposition MPPs. As I said earlier today, I don't want to believe politics was being played here. Uh, so that's why I called on Doug Ford earlier today to clear the air and make it quite, uh, quite well known to the people of Ontario transparently how they arrived at that decision. We've, their decisions, we've not yet heard clarity on that. So I hope that the Premier will take the opportunity in the days ahead to make it clear. But today's focus, again, is about the fact that Doug Ford has once again dropped the ball. His team doesn't know whether they're coming or going. They've lost control. They are flailing. And we are all suffering for it. Parents, students, educators, small business people, folks living in nursing homes right across this province, we are suffering because Doug Ford is in over his head.
Okay. Anything else uh, you wanted to add about just uh, today's announcement before I let you go? Anything you'd like to see in, in these days, weeks ahead, other than what you had just mentioned? Listen, I, I'd like the confusion to end. I mean, seriously, I heard your question on the press conference today. Great question, by the way. But let me just say how it's possible that he could look at the people of Ontario, Doug Ford, with a straight face and say that the world had changed 180 degrees in 24 hours between what his education minister said yesterday, what took place today. It's, it is the single scariest thing that I've seen from a government anywhere in this country during this pandemic, that they are this confused, that they are this out to lunch, and that they are this far in over their heads should scare everyone across this province.